And welcome back to Sunday Square Off. Arizona classrooms have been dealing with a teacher shortage for several years. It might be getting better, though. About 20% of teacher vacancies were unfilled at the start of this school year. It was about 25% at the start of the last school year. So a slight improvement that according to the Arizona School Personnel Administrators Association. Superintendent Kathy Hoffman, question for you. Are teacher raises the 20 by 2020 plan one reason why you're seeing fewer vacancies? I think so. I think that teachers do have a little more hope this school year, knowing that there have been raises and there will continue to be one more raise coming this spring. However, I want to be very clear that 20% is unacceptable. 20% of positions to be vacant is completely unacceptable. And that has a very direct impact on the on the effective effectiveness and quality of instruction that students are receiving. So I'm kind of puzzled by the numbers because there's that vacancies in classrooms at the same time the same group says but almost nine out of ten teachers are returning to their job every year so retention seems to be high what am i missing in those numbers that appear to conflict um that's a good question i i think that in previous years since we had the numbers were last year was 25 percent were vacant um so I'm, I'm not exactly sure how they did their calculations. Yeah. I didn't work with them on that. It's possible that they're including people who are long-term substitutes or emergency certified in that calculation, but I'm not exactly sure. So this is also a nationwide problem. We like to think we're special in Arizona, but we're not. Uh, it's, it's across the country. There is a demand for teachers that, that's not being met, and that will go on well into the 2020s uh, projection show. So is it just a pay problem? Or are there other things that can be done to make this job more attractive? It is a complex issue, so pay is one piece, benefits. Uh, when we have young teachers, they are looking for jobs that offer child care if they have if they have young children. They, um, they're, they're looking at the big picture, and more and more people, our young people do not stay in these careers for as long as people once did. So I do think we need to look at the problem holistically. However, um, I just want to make sure to say too that our department is taking this very seriously. So while, while it might be a nationwide issue, our department is creating a whole new small team of people, creating new positions that are that will be entirely focused on educator recruitment and retention. Uh, Bob Robb thinks you're the person for the job. The Arizona Republic columnist thinks you're a technocrat who can handle this. So what kind of ideas are out there aside from pay? Let me give you one I'm really proud of. I, I met with the Department of Economic Security back in August. And, and when I met with them, I said, how, are, how can we partner? The Department of Economic Security, how can you be, be hard, partnering with school districts? And they talked about how when they're working um, with, within their job training and job uh, placement, offices, they're often helping people who have their high school degrees or, or equivalencies. And so I pointed out, well, our school districts have these great shortages. For example, the Mesa School District started the school year with 80 vacancies for bus drivers alone. And so since August, we have been partnering with the Department of Economic Security and targeting Mesa Public Schools as a starting point because it is the biggest school district in the state and they have vacancies across many positions. And since August, they were able to recruit 34 new people through DES to work for Mesa Public Schools. So um, I'm really pr proud of that type yeah, of- Bus drivers, but not teachers. It was not just bus uh, drivers, it was, it was classified staff. So, so paraprofessionals, teacher aides, and those by filling those positions, it helps get people into the field, into pathways that can then become teachers. Okay. Let's bring it back to money ended on this. So the 20 by 2020 plan ends next year. Teachers get their final raise next year. Should the governor and legislature come up with a plan in the next session starting in January to renew that, to make this permanent? What do you want to see or do you want to see a ballot initiative? I definitely want to see it keep going and so I've been thinking about this a little bit and thinking maybe we need to go next to 25 by 2025. Sound has a nice ring to it and I think it should include not just our classroom homeroom teachers but across all of our support staff positions because they were previously excluded and as a speech therapist I can't tell you how many times someone has offered me a job when I'm especially in rural parts of the state and we need to make sure that all positions in our schools have competitive pay. All right. When we come back, more.